In this video, I'm going to show you one example of an acidic mechanism and one example of a basic mechanism for the nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction. We're actually going to start with the basic mechanism because the basic mechanism is a lot more straightforward. It's a good one to start with. The basic mechanism, um, I'm going to be using an acid chloride as my example, and the basic nucleophile that we're going to use is the methoxide ion. The negative charge, whenever we have a basic nucleophile, the nucleophile has got a full-blown negative charge on it, and the negative charge of the nucleophile is going Going to attack the carbonyl carbon, open up the carbon oxygen double bond, and we will create an intermediate that has a single bond oxygen with a negative formal charge. And we've added, um, I almost wrote nucleophile, we've added the, uh, the nucleophile in this case, OME. And then the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen comes back down to recreate that carbon oxygen double bond. The chloride or whatever the um, derivative, whatever the derivative group is, that leaves and it leaves us with a recreated carbon oxygen double bond and a new a new derivative. In this case, we've made an ester. And that is all there is to the basic mechanism. Like I said, it's very straightforward. The acidic mechanism is not hard, it just has some extra steps in it. So when we're doing an acidic mechanism, our nucleophile is either going to be negatively charged or um, some, uh, or excuse me, positively charged or neutral. In this case, it's positively charged. I'm using the exact same acid chloride, and we're using this H3O plus as the nucleophile. In acidic conditions, the very first thing that always happens is the acid protonates the oxygen of the carbonyl group. So that's going to be our step one. And this is necessary to kind of help get the um, carbonyl carbon ready for the reaction to take place. The, in this process, during the protonation, we are, in this case, we're left with a water molecule. There's going to be something that's formed from that starting acid that is going to be a relatively okay nucleophile lone pair of electrons on whatever that molecule might be, they will attack the carbon oxygen double bond, uh, or excuse me, attack the carbon and open up the carbon oxygen double bond. And so here is where we place the, the new functional group on the molecule. Um, we've got an our OH group up here, and we do have a positive formal charge on the oxygen atom that formed the bond to the carbon. Uh, next thing we're going to do is deal with the positive formal charge that's on this oxygen. To do this, we'll use, in this case, we'll use another water molecule. Whatever you're going to use in this step, it's going to most likely be the exact same molecule that you used as your nucleophile. Again, with the lone pair of electrons, we're going to be grabbing one of the hydrogen atoms to um, get rid of that positive formal charge. So we'll end up with this. And then I actually am going to draw one of these OH bonds out. So the next thing that will happen is we're going to recreate the carbon oxygen double bond and get rid of the derivatives group, in this case the chlorine, whatever it is, whatever group is going away. Like I said, the acidic mechanism is quite a bit more tedious. Um, and we're going to have a positive formal charge on the oxygen, so let's just kind of look exactly at what happened here. We use a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen to create this carbon-oxygen double bond. The hydrogen is still there, so now our oxygen has three bonds, which means it has a positive formal charge. The OH group is still there. I've just drawn it over to the side, and the chlorine is gone as a leaving group. And the last thing that we need to do here is use another nucleophile, so one more of our nucleophile, to deprotonate the oxygen. And this gets us finally to the product, which for this reaction is a carboxylic acid. So one thing um, to kind of help you when you're working on these mechanisms and looking at the different mechanisms, uh, when you are doing an acidic mechanism of the nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction, that's a mouthful, all of the intermediates, all of the reactants, um, everything in the reaction, so I'll just change that to say everything, everything. So this means that all your reactant, your product, and all of your reagents everywhere along the line, and all of your intermediates everywhere along the line, everything is going to be either a positively formal charged 
or it's going to be neutral. So when you look at this, you'll notice that there are no negative formal charges anywhere at all. That is a characteristic of the acidic mechanism, and that's 100% of the time because it's taking place in an acidic solution. So acidic solutions uh, don't have negative charges associated with them. For the basic reaction, we can make the same generalization. Uh, everything in the basic mechanism, everything is either negatively formal charged or it is neutral, no positive charges at all. In the next few videos, we're going to start going through um, each one of the carboxylic acid derivatives one at a time and looking at the individual acyl substitution reactions that they do.